Okay guys, so this is just a, another lesson just to overview the idea of cladograms, phylogenetic trees, and the concepts of convergent and divergent evolution. So basically, cladograms and phylogenetic trees are both diagrams used to show relatedness between species. So we'll start off on the cladogram, which is probably the simpler of the two diagrams. So basically, it just shows how related things are. Um, and the key thing you want to look for is the branching points in the diagram. So at a branching point, that's when the groups had a common ancestor, after which they don't. So at this point, going up here, that's where insects branched out from all the other groups, which are vertebrates. Okay. And um, looking up more closer to the top, over here, we've got the branching point between prosimians, the group of... Um, primates that includes lemurs and things like that, and then the group that eventually goes and forms humans. So basically, on a cladogram, you want to look for where the, sorry, where the branching point is. The more recent the branching point, the more closely related the species are. Okay, so that's the key thing about cladograms. These points where the branches are are what you're looking out for. A phylogenetic tree is very similar to that. They, are, they also have branches coming out as well. But they also put in a scale to show at what point the branch happened. So in that way, they're a little bit more useful and maybe a, a little bit harder to understand compared to a cladogram. But for example, this point that's circled is the point at which humans branched out from the groups that went on to become chimpanzees and bonobos. So um, we can see by looking at the scale that happened in the region of about five to six million years ago. So that's how we can interpret a phylogenetic tree. A phylogenetic tree is showing us both the relatedness between species, but also when they branched off with a more of an exact timeline, as opposed to a cladogram, which just shows us when it happened, but doesn't really give us a scale for when it happened. Okay? So that's how cladograms and phylogenetic trees work. Um, you've got to be able to look at them and interpret them. I'll give you some questions on those to make sure you can, uh, you can understand them. Um, but yeah. The other concept we're going to look at is the concepts of convergent and divergent evolution. So convergent evolution is basically when two species gain a similar trait, not from common ancestry, but by adopting similar niches or lifestyles. Okay, so that's quite similar to the idea of an, an analogous structure that we um, looked at in a previous lesson. So basically, the individuals get a similar trait, but they've come from a different ancestry. All right, so that's convergent evolution. They begin differently and they become more similar over time. And they're becoming more similar, not because they share a recent common relative, but because they are adapting to similar lifestyles. So um, yeah, a good example of that would be sugar gliders and flying squirrels. If you want to Google these, um, I can't really draw them very well, so that's why I haven't drawn a diagram. But they are both small mammals that have um, some long stretches of skin that allow them to glide between, uh, between trees. So sugar gliders are marsupials and flying squirrels are eutherians. So they're different groups of mammals. So they um, don't have a recent common ancestor. They haven't both inherited that trait from a common ancestor. They both evolved that trait over time to link in with their lifestyle where they live in a dense rainforest and need to glide between trees. So that's convergent evolution. They've come from not recent common ancestors, but they've still gained a similar trait. The other type of evolution is divergent evolution, all right? And that's when a species that um, has, when two species that have a recent common ancestor become different over time as they adapt to new habitats. So it occurs, you know, when speciation is happening and after speciation happens as well. So the diagram for that, I've got them coming from a common ancestor, but they gain different traits um, over time as they adapt. Quite a good example of divergent evolution would be elephants and uh, woolly, ma uh, woolly mammoths. So they both come from the elephant family, but over time, the um, living elephants we know today, they have very large ears, they have reduced body hair, um, and they have a long tail. All of that helps them adapt to their life in the very warm lands in which, um, in which they live. Uh, you know, having big ears allows them to cool down easy, having reduced fur means they, they don't trap as much heat. Whereas woolly mammoths, even though they're not with us anymore, 
they had really um, really thick hair um, and they had much smaller ears compared to modern day uh, modern day elephants. So that's shown divergent evolution as they come from different backgrounds, but they're adapting to become um, to become more different over time. So that's just convergent and divergent evolution, um, and you'll have a task regarding those as well. Okay, that is all from me.